Old Creek Road, that's gonna be the road for today. This is a good one, hidden out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, hopefully it's not crazy damage from the insane amounts of rain we've had lately. But the reason for this video, guys, is to talk about why I let the CRF 250L go. Why didn't I keep it? And what made me get rid of it to buy something like this? Because obviously, one of the biggest problems with the CRF 250L is it's it's not great off-road. And the reason for that is it's a little bit too heavy and it's uh, lacking in the suspension department. And this motorcycle obviously is gonna be plagued with the similar. It doesn't have great suspension and it is heavy for off-road. Now price point wise, depending on the model of this motorcycle you buy, really this bike's only like a thousand dollars more than a dang 250L and you're going to get more power out of this motorcycle obviously than a 250L. So it, at least, you know, riding this thing on the freeway is, I mean it's a thumper like the 250L so it's still not amazing and it is a little bit vibey but it is a better experience and an experience, you know, worth doing. God, I love it out here. It's been a while since I've been out here. It's an experience that is acceptable, in my opinion, to commute on in a motorcycle like this, which is what makes the big difference from the 250L to this. This is actually comfortable to sit on, comfortable for, to ride for long durations of time, and it has tons of wind protection, and also, obviously, more power. So it definitely, you know, in the freeway slash commuter com department, this way outweighs the function of the 250L. Not to mention the 250L has a 2.1 gallon gas tank and you're going maybe 90 miles on that bike, which is brutal. For me, that would mean uh, for my commute, I have to fill up the 250L every single day to ride it to and from work. And an additional problem to that is not just the fueling, but the 250L for that duration of time on the freeway is completely unacceptable. That is a maximum 10 miles on the freeway in my opinion for the 250L where this I can see myself riding this for hours at a time so I definitely spend entirely more time on the freeway and commuting with a motorcycle than I do going off-road I would say I would be more of like a, a 90 10 even if that I'm like rarely took the 250L off-road uh, a lot of that had to do with you know you as a small ass gas tank and you'd have to load it down with all your crap which is not impossible you could buy full bags and everything you need with the 250L put a bigger fuel tank on it upgrade your suspension a little bit and yes definitely make the 250L a lot more fun but I don't think you would enjoy the power for long distance rides uh, I think it would be acceptable especially if it was all back road and or all off road miles and not freeway miles so for me, I, I'm not dogging the 250L as if it's a bad purchase or a bad motorcycle. I really enjoyed it for the few years that I had it. I didn't ride it enough, that's for sure. And then once my commute got insane, it became a hell of a lot more realistic for me to get something that was comfortable for a long duration. And then maybe something that, you know, occasionally I can take off road. So that's really where this kind of sits into that picture. I can carry everything. I don't need a backpack. Everything goes in all these bags and I could still just say, hey, let's just go on that dirt road <laughs> and go have some fun. And, you know, yeah, I'm not going to be jumping this thing, but honestly, I couldn't jump the 250L. I was bottoming that thing out every little tiny drop I'd take it off of. So um, I feel like I'm still in the same boat where this was acceptable off-road. I wouldn't say it was amazing by any means. Uh, it's long wheelbase uh, makes it kind of fun on the streets and the highways because it handles it a little bit better uh, And even in the dirt it felt you know pretty decent so the long haul is The 250L is great if where you're gonna ride it is back roads to and from work and you're gonna do a little bit more serious off-road day adventures maybe not necessarily long adventures you're really just going out for a few hours to get some dirt riding in and then you're gonna go home or do it on your way home from work or whatever as long as that commute does not require highways in my opinion <laughs> so it's sad to see her go she was a good bike I love Hondas I think they're just 
so well made and I think they're so dang reliable and I feel Kawasaki is pretty dang close to them and so far I'm really enjoying this little thing I hope you guys like the new bike and want to see some stuff done to it because obviously we're going to be putting a lot on this motorcycle I did buy obviously the adventure package come on come on ladies oh those are dudes and ladies dudes are guarding them guarding those ends but I did buy the adventure package for this motorcycle so it comes with some extra stuff like the front bars the lights the lower kind of bars engine guards and of course the side pannier brackets that the bike doesn't come with to put panniers on it so that does come with the adventure model as well as obviously the panniers so we have all of that available and ready to go uh, another thing that the adventure package comes with is the power outlets the USB and the power are already wired up and ready to go so that you know, I, I don't know if it is the best decision. Uh, I think ultimately maybe buying the cheapest version of this bike would be best because I honestly see myself buying bags for off-road. Uh, if I drop this bike, I know I would just bust up those plastic bags. And I think those bags are amazing because they're easily lockable and they are great for commuting. I just don't think they're off-road bags. So I will probably buy bags for off-road and of course some side sidebars i want some cruise control some heated grips uh there's i'm i've got so many things lined up and if you guys have some good ideas of what you think a klr should have on it let me know uh, i'd be curious to see what you guys think would be cool on this bike i've got a pretty good list already set up so if you're interested in more on the klr make sure you subscribe there's gonna be a lot more videos on this and of course we're not done with our seven content as well there's plenty of that to come as well thanks again for watching guys i hope you enjoyed say goodbye to the at uh, crf 250l and hello to the new toy to the new klr 650 so we'll see you guys next week smile upon my face cause there's excitement in the chase this I know yeah I'm going